Hello, welcome to your 2018 New Year of the Dog Predictions. If you want to get straight to your reading, feel free to skip past this intro. So as an update, I haven't posted to my channel for the past couple of months because I moved over the holidays and I took January to unpack and comfortably settle into my new place. I am excited to say that I'm now able to begin posting monthly forecast videos again. So this month of February has already been a very active month. I'm filming these videos on the day of the Chinese New Year ushered in today on February 16th, which really comes at an advantageous time of change this year. This is because directly following Valentine's Day, we had the new moon solar eclipse in Aquarius on the 15th. We had already experienced the full moon lunar eclipse on January 31st. Eclipses happen twice a year and they come in pairs two weeks apart. They tend to bring shifts in our life circumstances, which is a necessary function in order to grow and move forward. Sometimes these changes can be interpreted as being sudden or unexpected. However, really most likely they are the result of a longer term sort of underlying energy that has come to a culminating point of manifestation. And that is brought out at this time of the eclipses. So in this reading, we will be looking at the tarot to show the energetic focal point of the solar eclipse for your sign after the yearly predictions. So 2018 is the year of the earth dog. Earth has qualities of being effectively communicative, serious, and responsible in work, and the dog makes a loyal companion to friends, family, colleagues, and lovers. Overall this year, we will experience themes of trust in our associations, as well as the ability to draw in true friends and reliable partners. Dog energy gives honesty and fair actions, it can bring popularity in social circles. It lends advice and help to others and can fix bad habits or bad associations. For these video forecasts, I want to draw cards for the entirety of the new year, separate from the more immediate concentrated energy of the solar eclipse. So I will be doing these readings, readings in two parts, each with a different focus. These, of course, are general readings based upon either your sun, moon, or ascendant. So if you would like a personalized reading, please contact me through my website, sungoddessashley.com. Okay, so let's get started with your readings. Aquarius, let's see what the year of the dog has in store for you. So for this, I'm using the Connolly Tarot, and I'm also going to be drawing from the medicine cards and the secret language of color cards. So I'm going to focus on the 12 months of the year for you in your sign. I'm going to be pulling 12 cards for each month. One card for each month of the 12 months, including January and February, even though we're already halfway through February. I want to include it to see the bigger picture. So show me Aquarius, what the year of the dog will be like. Okay, here we go. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Ooh, the Empress. Looks like you're going to be the Empress this year. Okay. Well, the Empress is the wife and the mother. Okay. So if this isn't you, then it could be, you know, your mother. It could be um, your wife. Um, or it could be you as a mother or a wife. Okay. But she has, um, she's generally married and generally has kids. So 
Um, this indicates fertility. Um, fertility issues could come up. If it's not fertility issues, then it could also mean pregnancy. The Empress also just uses her creative power to um, make her uh, surroundings very beautiful. So it's like you're using this um, ab ability to like better your improvement, better your environment, better yourself. I see like self-improvement this year as themes and really like owning your divine beauty and your, and your power, your personal power. She is very empowered. <laughs> um, I'm also getting like makeover or something at some point this year. Okay. Um, looks good. She's always in the process of reinventing herself. That's what I'm seeing that you're doing this year. It's like reinventing yourself so that you're the better version of who you were before without discarding your previous self. You're integrating new components, new aspects of yourself. So that's what I'm seeing that you're doing this year. The Emperor to me and the Knight of Wands together looks like a business trip or a work trip. Uh, I usually look at the Knight of Wands as travel, but it could also be a new and fun and exciting flirtatious sort of person coming into your life as well. Um, just someone who enjoys adventure. This could be you. It could be someone else coming into your life. But I also see just work trip. So January, it looks like, you know, down to business, down to things that are important, that matter to you, taking care of the responsibilities and the details of, you know, your life. And the emperor is also the husband to the empress. So he rules his his castle. She rules her castle. They, they're the authority figures of the family, of their community. Um, so partnering with another strong person to do that with you, to sort of rule your kingdom together. Um, but yes, the emperor is sort of the husband and father, his partner to the, to the wife and the mother. Um, they're a good complementary pair. So this person could also be entering your life as well. For some of you, um, if you're not going to get pregnant this year, or you're not going to have kids or have some sort of issue or circumstance, I should say, around that, it does look like some of you could be meeting your, um, husband if you're not already married or meeting your wife if you're not already married um some of you if you are it just looks like there's more responsibilities within the family this year so the sense that i'm getting i also could also do your parents either way i think we spent enough time on that so let's look at um then march next month you're the high priestess she's a very psychic powerful woman she uses her magical powers um, for good, hopefully. <laughs> the High Priestess definitely has a lot of psychic power, a lot of magical power. Um, it definitely represents the occult, mysteries, things like that. It looks like, you know, getting into some sort of um, study around that or studying more regarding that. It seems like it's interest of interest to you. Again, some of you are going to be studying more astrology in March. Um, but on the other sense, the high priestess is also like a nun, right? She's in a spiritual context of like a church, a convent, a mosque or whatever that is. But um, she's this figure who's sort of, well, she has her legs crossed in this picture, which is very much an appropriate representation of like her energy, right? And then you have the lovers, which is not so much cross legs energy. Um, but it does look like sort of, if you do meet an exciting person, for example, it just looks like you might not really jump in the sack with them right away. You want to sort of discover the mysteries about this person and be mysterious in the sense that this person will chase you, right? So then I do see the lovers, which is like a relationship choice um, that you have to make. And I do see that leading to some sort of insecurities. Um, if I'm just reading it out like this, it could be like some sort of relationship choice that makes you feel insecure around communication about divulging too much um because i do come from a sense of like wanting to maintain your privacy and mystery so either way um in may it does look like you're sort of defending what you have worked hard for also what you don't want to lose it's just wanting to protect and defend this what's coming before it um and it looks like you know you could have 
had some challenges with this person in the past. Actually, if it's not a new person, this is someone that's re-entering your life, which has been an on, on again, off again relationship. And I hear some of you groaning, but it just looks like it's necessary in order to sort of clear up. In some cases, that's not gonna be, that's not gonna be the case with everybody. Um, but I am getting that you have been through, a, this is a card of having been through a lot. And if it's following a relationship card, it's having been through a lot with somebody. So the two of wands here, I do see like, you know, online, World Wide Web, internet technology being of central focus to you. Some of you may be getting a new computer um, in June, July. I do see um, a, spending a lot of time inside. So again, if you get a new computer or get like a new video game or something like that, or something like that where you're spending a lot of time online for whatever that purpose serves for you it just looks like you need to get out more because this is like summertime right you're supposed to be outdoors like uh it just looks like you're spending a lot of time online inside and it's like okay you need to get some fresh air <laughs> um so get out this summer um and if that doesn't sound like you because you're normally very active during the summer and you're always out and about it's, say it's your spring break or whatever or, or excuse me summer vacation it just looks like um, you know, in some case, it could be like, you get some sort of news or some, some information here that you're reading about, and it's like crippling to your mind in order for you to move forward. Because I see a lot of worry then following that. So this is feeling like blinded by your options, having too much to think about. Um, it's also what I call the analysis, analysis paralysis card, and it leads to even more stress, which you don't really need that. So it's almost like what I'm getting is like TMI. Keep it, keep it simple. Keep it basic. Don't spend too much online. It's like really affecting your mental health. Um, and that message could go for anybody, not necessarily Aquarius, but it is a very specific message that I'm pulling for Aquarius that I haven't mentioned for the other signs. So okay getting outdoors it's like it's interesting it's like the summer is like the middle of winter for you it's like why are you inside <laughs> anyway spending time outdoors spending time in nature will sort of calm the mind ease the mind as i'm seeing that would be a good thing to mitigate here also the empress she as she is mother nature she is mother she is nature she's out in nature so i'm seeing that as being like a remedy for you for whatever is going on here if you, if you have to be online for some sort of project for work or something like that it's important to schedule yourself time to get outside schedule some time to drink water by the way i'm not seeing any cups here i'm seeing wands and swords i'm not seeing any pentacles either no cups no pentacles no feminine receptive aspect it's all the masculine dynamic aspect of wands is external fire and air is external air so it's interesting this is very necessary then for you to be in the water element to go within and ac access your feelings and your intuition and this would be very important for you for being out in the earth and getting that grounding um, healing effect from nature is the earth so water earth um, there's a little bit of water here too okay that's interesting that two of the four elements are missing Okay, what else am I seeing? I'm seeing two court cards. We have the Knight of Wands and the Page of Wands. So you have two Wands court cards. So these are tend to, Wand is very fast. It burns through things very quickly. So I do see like friends coming in or like social acquaintances or people that you just end up meeting that have a very specific purpose. They come in and out. It doesn't feel like you're supposed to do a lot with them, but it feels like they come, you achieve something, they either give you something to work with or vice versa. And it's like, you've like, this is in and out sort of energy. This is meeting people by some sort of accident or happy surprise. And it's just like, oh, hey, we get along, great. We're gonna be best friends. And then you never see them again. <laughs> That's sort of that energy, but it's having fun with friends. Again, so this getting outdoors, I see you doing that here. This would be the energy. Um, in November, it's like, okay, you're finally ready to socialize and get out. Um, that's great. I do feel like Aquarius is usually involved in groups and organizations and lots of people anyway. So, um, generally that's what I'm, but I'm just sort of seeing how the energy is flowing and I'm seeing a lot of fire and air. Anyway, let's move on. 
So September, you have the strength card. I'm seeing this being like gentle strength. It's not aggressive, overpowering. It's not like you're, you know, at the gym, like lifting too many weights. It's like you're doing some light exercise, like something like that. If it's not exercise, it's just an example, but it's like gentle strength. It's like um, not going too hard all at once. It's like conserving your energy. That's what I'm getting for this. And that can be applied to anything. Um, it's like you're wanting to build stamina, you know, by a little bit at a, a little bit at a time. So here you have in, in October, you have the moon. The moon feels very, it almost feels sad to me here. It's like you're going through something. Then you have like a similar position. There's a similar body position that this girl has here and here facing the left one you're looking down the other you're looking up but you're looking at, at the moon so it's like at night time when you're alone it's night out here's like during the day i get there's a little bit of depression here for some of you and i see that it's following this it's very important to take care of your physical and mental health this year um, also the emotional health since i don't see any cups I see a little bit of downtroddenness here I'm getting a little bit of depression then it's like you get like like you get like this joyful energy that comes in then sort of to to balance that out. I see it actually coming in from other people. It was wand wand wands like other energy inflowing, and it's like you're being visited by somebody and they want to get you out of your funk. That's what I'm seeing. Um, okay, so then you're like open. You're like yeah okay let's do it. Let's live in the moment. I feel like that lifts your spirits. So whatever person is coming in, it's sort of to lift your spirits here. I do see the Hierophant here. So again, you may be thinking about marriage. Maybe you're talking about marriage, maybe for next year or something that you're going to be committed to. This is generally a marriage card, but it also could be a card of students. It's like um, school or being a part of like a religious organization or spiritual organization. Um, I do see two people in front of a priest here. So if it's not a church thing, then I do get something that's on that level so and i am seeing a marriage card i do see a relationship i do see the emperor and the empress so i'm not really jumping to conclusions by seeing that that could be in the cards for some of you sagittarians anyway i do want to um draw a card from the color cards i thought this would be a little fun added thing an added message it has been fun so far. I just want to look at the color energy for the year for you, Aquarius. Okay, show me the color energy. Okay. Ruby. Red. Ruby. Wow. Ruby helps in um, okay. So it's it it's related to the strength card, which is Leo. Um, strength and also courage, a strong mind, a strong body. You might want to work with Ruby. Actually, you don't have to be a millionaire to have rubies. They don't have to be that, um, you know, like fine, good quality gemstones. They can just be like regular, like stones. If you go to like a crystal shop, you can get a Ruby. Um, but that might help your heart, especially if you're having some sort of depression or you have relationship issues that come up this year, like heart partnership relationship issues um it strengthens the heart it's also good for the blood circulation again getting outside being active um i am seeing this being related also to the um the root chakra it's the muladhara chakra it's the um what connects you to the earth survival security like survival instincts i'm not seeing any pentacles here pentacles would be money things it's also groundedness okay so needing to be in nature in order to ground you remember that you are a human that you are here on earth you're not just ideas you are not your thoughts you are not just your actions and just the external life it's like you experiencing yourself experiencing yourself being comfortable in your body i was getting like self-improvements but I also feel like focusing on your physical body this year and being embodied, not being disembodied. It could be some sort of through some sort of spiritual practice like yoga or exercise, getting exercise here, meditation, getting outside, something like that where you're 
aware of the movements of your body and you're not being like sedentary, um, it's going to bring in money for you. But I just see you needing to be connected to the earth and to the heart, like your heart. It's about strength. Okay. Actually, before I draw this, I want to read about this ruby because I don't have it memorized. Even though I got a lot of, like, channeled a lot of information for you on that, I think that I'd like to also like to read about it. So this is just a little short excerpt. It says, ruby is a color of dynamism, rejuvenation, and strength. Increasing your stamina, which I mentioned with this, and filling you up with energy and enthusiasm for life. It is a color for prosperity, courage, achievement, and motivation. Ruby is also encourages shy people to come out of their shell by building confidence. Use ruby light to feel truly alive and dynamic. Bathe yourself in light of ruby. Love it. So in order to do this, you can shake your hand for 30 seconds, then rest it for 15 seconds. Shake your left hand for 30 seconds, then rest it for 15 seconds. Then shake your whole body for 30 seconds and rest it for 15 seconds. Repeat this step three times. Now rub the palms of your hands together for 40 seconds. This exercise helps to warm, awaken, and rejuvenate your body. Visualize ruby light moving through your body, cleansing your blood, and stimulating your energy. Become aware of what it is like to feel truly alive. You may even want to wear a ruby pendant or hold a ruby crystal to strengthen your body and motivate you for success. Say, divine healing intelligence, please release all pain, stress, and tiredness and infuse my body with healing, rejuvenating, revitalizing energy. It's interesting that I did mention about like a calm strength in order to achieve like the stamina that you are wanting. And they actually, in the description, they use the word stamina, which I find is like very, very accurate, very right on. But also, again, the movement that I was seeing was like getting outside, exercise. You Sometimes we neglect the, the basic things of life because we're so wrapped up in like concepts and again, maybe technology or things of that sort. So um, I did also want to draw a card from the medicine cards deck to find out what your animal totem will be. I thought it was going to be fitting because we're at the year of the dog, which sort of has the animal theme to it. So let's see what comes up for you, Aquarius. What's your animal totem? I'm getting that you actually have several, but this one is the most important raven. I think that's magic. I think. Since I don't have these memorized, I'm going to read from the book on this. And it is a little bit longer than what I read for the ruby. So if you want to skip past this part, that's fine. I'm going to be pulling more cards for the Eclipse Energy using this deck. So, But if you want to listen, feel free. It starts off with a poem. So it says, Raven, black as pitch, mystical as the moon, speak to me of magic. I will fly with you soon. See the moon in energy here for October. October is Halloween. Magic. You could be doing some sort of magical ritual on Halloween. Okay, so throughout time, Raven has carried the medicine of magic. This has been true in many cultures across the planet. It is sacred in the medicine ways to honor Raven as the bringer of magic. If the magic is bad medicine, the carrier, carrier may be honored out of fear than out of respect. Those who fear Raven may do so because they have been dabbling in areas which they had no knowledge and a spell may have backfired on them. Rather than analyzing the dark side of sorcery, realize that you will fear Raven only if you need to learn about your inner fears or self-created demons. Raven magic is a powerful medicine that can give you courage to enter the darkness of the void, which is the home of all that is not yet in form. The void is called the Great Mystery. Great Mystery existed before all other things came into being. Great Spirit lives inside the void and emerged from the Great Mystery. Raven is the messenger of the void. If Raven appears in your spread, you are about to experience a change in consciousness. This may evolve walking outside. This may evolve walking inside the great mystery on another path at the edge of time. It would portend a signal brought by the raven that says, You have earned the right to see and experience a little more of life's magic. 
Raven color is the color of the void, a black hole in space that holds all the energy of the creative source. Okay, what's this? In native teachings, the color black means many things, but it does not mean evil. Black can mean the seeking of answers, the void, or the road of the spiritual or non-physical. The blue black of Raven contains an iridescence that speaks of the magic of darkness and a changeability of form and shape that brings an awakening in the process. Raven is the guardian of ceremonial magic and in absentia, healing. In any healing circle, Raven is present. Raven guides the magic of healing and the change in consciousness that will bring about a new reality and dispel dis-ease or illness. Raven brings in the new state of wellness from the void of great mystery and the field of plenty. Raven is the messenger that carries all energy flows of ceremonial magic between the ceremony itself and the, and the intended destination. I see that here. Okay, so for instance, if a ceremony is being performed to send energy to a disaster area where people need courage and strength, Raven would be the carrier for that energy flow. The intention would allow the people of the devastated area to feel the concern and support of the participants in the ceremony. If you have chosen Raven, magic is in the air. Do not try to figure it out. You cannot. It is the power of the unknown at work and something special is about to happen. The deeper mystery, however, is that you will respond to the sparkling synchronicity of this alchemical moment. Will you recognize it and use it to further enhance your growth? Can you accept it as a gift of the Great Spirit? Or will you limit the power of the Great Mystery by explaining it all away? It may be time to call Raven as a courier to carry as an intention, some healing energy, a thought, or a message. Raven is the patron of smoke signals or spirit messages represented by smoke. So if you want to send a message to the blue road of spirit in order to contact the ancients, call Raven. Or, who knows, the ancients may be calling to you. Remember this magic moment came from the void of darkness and the challenge is to bring it to light. In doing so, you will have honored the magician within. I was also hearing, um, in, other than working with Ruby, um, like crystals, uh, gemstones, it might be beneficial for this raven energy for you to work with um, uh, black tourmaline and also, um, what was the one that I was really thinking? Uh, smoky quartz. I, the smoky quartz would help the raven. Okay, and I think that's a little bit more easily uh, accessible than ruby or Black Mine's pretty accessible too. <clears throat> okay, so this looks like to be your year. I want to go ahead and um, draw two cards for the uh, lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse now that we have an energy, uh, or an idea of what the energy looks like for the year for you. So the first card I'm going to draw is going to be for the lunar eclipse. Then we'll draw one for the solar eclipse which just happened a couple days ago. So we're still feeling the energy of the solar eclipse. And I'm going to interpret the shadow card as what energy will we be bringing in with us for March? Interesting. Well, the Queen of Pentacles is the day-to-day -day Empress. So she has sort of that regal authority and... Um, sort of reverence as this divine mother, but here on earth and amongst us natural mortals, she is this um, like embodiment of the goddess, right? So in day-to-day -day activities. So owning your personal power, all of that. Queen of Pentacles provides and nourishes herself. And here's that earth energy that I wanted to see for you. I didn't see any pentacle cards. So um, again, that being in the garden sort of energy of the Empress is shown here with the Queen of Pentacles. So it looks like, you know, there are some insecurities that sort of came up to the surface for you in uh, late January, early February um, that you're sort of still sorting out, actually. Um, this may be insecurities around your um, ability to 
be successful in work or relationships or just in your achieving your personal goals. Um, but something definitely is like you're wanting to hold on to something and it's sort of showing you a mirror of like, okay, do you really want to hold on to this? Like, let's look at this. Um, so then the solar eclipse were energy that we're still in now. It's still really fresh. It's the six of pentacles. So when you're feeling insecure or you're feeling, you know, afraid in some way, um, or you have all this pent up energy, it's good to um, use that in a productive way to serve other people. This is a card of service of helping out people that are more needy. Um, than us, um, people that don't have as much as us, or you sharing your gifts and abilities with other people to better them in some way. You have more than enough to go around here. So, and it also looks like if you need help, um, you, that the help will come to you as well. It goes both ways with this card. And I'm also seeing the help of the mother, from the mother. Um, so it could be the great mother, the great mother spirit goddess or it could be actually your physical mother either way somebody does have your back who could be like a mother okay so i want to go ahead and end this video i'm going to cap off this reading by drawing a message from the lover's oracle card deck it's just a brief message here okay interesting this is what it looks like It says, any time not spent in love is wasted. So that's brambles sort of growing over this. Lots of trees, brambles, overgrowth, hasn't been tended to for a while. You need to tend to your body, your physical needs when it comes to physical needs that you have with other people and relationships. Or just like security needs being in, more in your body. But loving yourself and loving other people, that's not a waste of time. Any time not spent in love is wasted. Okay, Aquarius, so this was your message for the Eclipse uh, reading and also the year of 2018, Year of the Dove. Hope this was... Um, beneficial to you and entertaining to watch. If you liked it, leave a like. If you like the content of my channel, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you in the upcoming videos. Until then, take care and be well.